This morning we're going to be in Job chapter 19. Job chapter 19. chapter, I believe it's uh, 29 verses. Job chapter 19 verse 1 says, Then Job answered and said, How long will ye vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourself strange to me. And be it indeed that I have erred. Mine error rem remaineth with myself. If I indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me, and plead against me my reproach. Know now that God hath overthrown me, and hath compassed me with his neck. Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. He hath fenced up my way that I cannot pass, and he hath set darkness in my paths. He hath stripped me of my glory, and taken the crown from my head. He hath destroyed me on every side, and I am gone. And my hope hath he removed like a tree. He hath also kindled his wrath against me, and he counted me unto him as one of his enemies. His troops come together, and raise up their way against me, and encamp round about my tabernacle. He hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintances are verily estranged from me. My kinsfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. They that dwell in my house, and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant, he gave me no answer. I entreated him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife, though I entreated for the children's sake of mine own body. Yeah, my yeah, young children despise me. I arose and they spake against me, and my inward friends abhorred me. And they whom I love are turned against me. My bone cleaveth to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Have pity upon me, have pity upon me, O ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Why do ye persecute me as God, and are not, as, are not satisfied with my flesh? O oh, that my words were not written, O oh, that they were printed in a book that they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand in the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, yeah. Yeah. whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. Mm -hmm. Though my reins be consumed within me, but ye should say, why persecute we him, seeing the root of the matter is found in me? Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth punishment of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. I want to thank you for the standing of the reading of God's word this morning. <clears throat> I want us to think about something, and it, 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 if you take notes, you can write this down. When faith speaks. Mm -hmm. And as I was going over this uh, scripture, a lot of things crossed my heart, crossed my mind. And one of them was, Christians today, and churches today, their faith isn't speaking, but they certainly are. You see, Job was going through some issues in this chapter. He was going through a lot of things. He had a lot of questions. And he thought God was doing all this stuff to him. In the scripture when he says, if it's an error, then it's an error that rests with me. You ever had those pity parties where nothing seems to go right? Everything goes wrong and you think, I had to have done something. God's not happy with me. 
God is upset with me. I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and nothing's changed. Well, Job was right there where you've been. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> he was having his moment. Everybody's against me. My own family doesn't even know who I am. Mm -hmm. I'm a stranger to them. Those that love me are far from me. And those in my own house, I'm but an alien to them. Nobody cares. And then Job got to the point where he didn't even think God cared. But then faith, his faith, began to speak. I know that my Redeemer lives. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, let me tell you something. No matter what you're going through, no matter how hard your days will be or have been, no matter how down you get, about those around you, those that you come in contact with, or those that may act like they don't even know you. And maybe your prayers haven't been answered. But I can promise you they've been heard. Sometimes no answer is the answer. Sometimes a no answer or a a, a silent end of the telephone means that God is still there. Mm -hmm. Just trust him. Mm -hmm. yes. God, pray God. But see, we as a people want an answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I prayed about something and never heard from God. Then wait upon him. Yep. Mm -hmm. Continue to trust him like you say you do. Yep. See, here's the problem today. We go through our problems in life and we don't let our faith speak. As I said at the beginning, there's a lot of Christians, their faith isn't speaking, but they certainly are. They're doing a lot of this. Their mouth never stopped moving. Why? Because they're saying what they think, what they feel, how angry they are. They're making sure that they're speaking, but they're not listening for God. You know, I thought about this last night. There's a lot of Christians... There's a lot of churches, they wouldn't know the voice of God if he spoke to them. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't know it. They wouldn't know it if it came from the, the clouds of heaven. They wouldn't know it. Mm. Why? Because they've never taken the time to listen to him. Yeah. Yep. They've done a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. None of which has been led by the Holy Spirit. None of it has been faith driven. But they're still talking. Mm -hmm. You ever notice, and what I'm about ready to tell you, it, it should bother you as a Christian. Did you ever notice that churches nowadays, they have a lot of ministries. They have a lot of things going on that they tack the word ministry to. Mm -hmm. But most of it has very little to do with ministry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most of it has very little to do with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It has to do with video games and cornhole and going to the movies and going here and going there. And what's this event? Where are we going next month? And all of these other things. And they tack ministry to it. I'm sorry if you take Jesus Christ out of it. It's no longer ministry. It's just a trip. Yeah. Yeah. And they'll say, look how full our ministry is. Well, of course it is. It doesn't look any different than the world. The world's interested in things. Having fun. And churches think just because the same fun that they can have in the world they're having in a church house makes it okay. Well, it doesn't. Because the moment that you don't include Jesus Christ, you're just as bad off as you were in the world. That's right. Don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with the church having events. But there is something wrong when the events trump Jesus Christ. There is something wrong when a church removes the message of Jesus Christ in order to attract a lost and dying world. Because what happens is the lost world comes into a church that's minus Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And it's of no benefit to them anymore. 
Because where they used to be able to find Jesus, he's no longer there. You know, in this scripture, when Job says that my Redeemer liveth, I want to go down to that real quick. First off, I want to go back just a little ways before that. In verse 23, when he says, Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. He didn't know that one day, his life, what he encountered, what he went through, was one day going to be written in a book. See, God wasn't persecuting Job. God was trusting that the faith that Job had was going to hold strong. God wasn't ignoring Job. God wasn't beating Job. God had faith in Job. said that they were graven with an iron pin and lead in the rock forever. And they are. God placed the life of Job in his word to show you and I what it's going to take to make it through life. That life doesn't always, isn't always easy. Isn't always a walk in the park. Everything doesn't always just happen like you hoped it would. Christian, hear me. I've said this many a time, and I'll say it to the day the Lord comes and gets me. I don't put my faith in Washington. No. I don't. No. I never have, and I never will. I don't put my faith <laughs> in a church house. I love each and every one of you, but my faith is not in this place. It's not. This is just a wood structure that sits on a block of land. That's it. My faith isn't in this building. My faith isn't in any one of you. Just like I hope your faith isn't in me. Because if it is, it's misguided and it's in the wrong spot. My faith is not in my job. My faith is not in my bank account. And thankfully, because it wouldn't last long. <coughs> <coughs> my faith isn't in the way I emotionally feel when I wake up every day. It's not. My faith isn't in the weather, my neighbors, the city in which I live. None of those. <coughs> my faith it's in one thing, in one thing alone. Yes. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. My Redeemer lived. Yes. Amen. Now, Christian, this morning, that statement should bring you joy, but it should also make you look at your life a little closer than you did before. Yep. Why? Because if you, my Redeemer <laughs> lives, that means if you're a Christian, your Redeemer lives. Mm -hmm. And if your Redeemer lives, then you better make sure your life's where it's supposed to be. Because one day, as it says in the end of this, that ye may know there is a judgment. <laughs> Amen. Verse 29. Be afraid, be ye afraid of the sword, for with wrath, with wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Mm -hmm. yeah. I heard a preacher say online in a video, and I agree with it 100%. He said, there are, there are Christians, they go to church every day, and they think their worship has to be built up when they come in the building. Got to build it up. Give me something good. Today, preacher, makes me feel good. That's not what worship is, and that's not why preachers are in the pulpit, to make you feel good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not here this morning to build you up. Mm -hmm. That's not why I'm here. That's not why God called me. To give you a message, to make you feel good, build you up, give you just this, oh, I got the energy today. Boy, it was good to be in church. It better have been good before you got to church. Because the thing is, you don't come to church, like my dad said, to find God. That's right. Yep. Yep. You don't come to church to get all worked up into a 
ladder in order to worship God. You better be worshiping God every day of the week. And when you come to church, you come to church to thank God for what he's already done. Now, if you, when you walk in the door and your spirit is in line with my spirit and God's word, guess what? You're going to get excited. You're going to get involved. You're going to get lifted up. If you come in like a dead person and you sit there expecting God to give you life support, that's not coming. It's not. God's not going to shock, shock you into worship. It's not how that works. <laughs> if you didn't come expecting, you're not going to receive. That's right. I've told you this before. I don't just show up to work, do nothing, and just because they hired me, I get a paycheck. Doesn't work that way, or at least for very long. Because when they catch on that the fact he's not doing anything, it's not going to be long before he doesn't have a job. So Christian, when you come to church and you go, well, I'm here. God saved me. I'm just going to be here, preacher. Give me something that makes me feel good, then I'm going to go eat dinner. Really? So that's what being a Christian is to you. <clears throat> so when these moments come into your life like they did into Job's, how far do you think your Christian faith will take you? Are you going to be able to go, Lord, I know my Redeemer lives. No. Because a lot of Christians can't handle it when something doesn't go their way. They get mad and irritated and upset. Did you see what they're doing? Who cares? Who cares? My Redeemer lives. Yeah. What do I need to worry about? Washington can go down the all they want to. My Redeemer living. I'm not going to freak out about who's in the Oval Office. And I'll be the first one to tell you I don't agree with their policies. But I'm not going to sit home and worry about it. You want to know why? Because Jesus Christ is still in control. Amen. My Redeemer living. My Redeemer living. Yeah. Yeah. If you're worried about the way the world's going, maybe you ought to get out of your face and pray about it. <clears throat> you want the policies to change? Pray for them. Mm -hmm. You want abortion to disappear? Pray about it. Mm -hmm. Let your faith do the talking. Yes. Stop having a pity party and sitting down. All the world's against me. Nobody likes me. Everybody's just doing what I don't like. I just can't stand that person. My family don't love me. My wife and husband don't know who I am. My kids despise me. Everything's just falling apart and God don't love me no more. And you know that's a bold-faced lie from the devil, but you just in a position right now to believe it. Well, guess what? You want something that lifts you up? My Redeemer living. Stand up. Proclaim it. Accept it. Jesus Christ doesn't always give you what you want. But it gives you what you need and say, Lord, I'm going to do what I need to do for you. And I'm going to stop having my pity party. And I'm going to get up and let my faith yeah. do the talk. Yeah. We need to be able to say that no matter what comes along, yeah. no matter what. And I know that's hard when life gets hard. I know that. It's easy to say what you do when life is good, mm -hmm. but it's hard to follow through on that when life gets hard. I know that. And I also know that we're all human. Mm -hmm. But I'm not up here preaching to you, me. I'm preaching to you, God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I am human. Mm -hmm. But my Redeemer is not held by constraints of this life. That's right. I may not be able to do it, but he can. Yeah, man. Yeah. I may not be able to overcome, but he can. Yeah, yeah. I may not be able to reach my family that's lost, mm -hmm. but he can. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I may not be able to reach and bring as many people into this church and, and heal them and, and deliver them. 
and take care of their problems and take care of their life and fill this church out. But guess what? He can. What he needs, church, is for us to get on our face and say, God, don't let my family die lost. Don't let this church be non existent. Help me to be a better soul winner. Help me to be a better church member. Help me to be a better husband or a wife. Help me to be a better mother and a father, grandparent, aunt, uncle, cousin, whatever. Lord, help me to do what you'd have me to do. Amen. God doesn't expect you to figure it out. He expects you to trust him. And when you go through your dark moments, I want you to understand the moment that that thought crosses your mind that God is doing this to me or God doesn't love me or God isn't hearing me. Don't accept those lies because that's simply not true. There was a time in scripture, I don't remember how many years it was, but it was a few hundred years that God never spoke to nobody. No one. Think about that for a minute. And I don't, I don't remember between which scriptures it was because the Bible doesn't go in chronological order. It's the way things were. It's just the way it, it, God laid it out. But there was a time where there was a few hundred years that God didn't speak. 400 years. Thank you. <laughs> 400 years that God didn't speak. And we get upset if it's four minutes. We haven't heard from him. I prayed about it once. He never answered me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't care. I'm not going to pray again. Yeah, that sounds funny, but we've done, we've done that. Well, how come God gave them an answer, but he never gave me one? You ever had that thought? How come God is answering prayer in their life, but he's not answering prayer in mine? Instead of asking that question, why don't you ask this one? God, what do you want me to do? Yes. Amen. God, what do you want me to learn in this moment? Now, you all know the life of Job, right? Mm -hmm. Lost everything. And I mean everything. Lost his money, lost his way of life, lost his home, lost his children. Got ended up with boils and painful sores all over him. Sitting in, a, in an ash pile, rubbing ashes on himself. Everything was gone. And as I said just a little while ago, because God had faith in Job. When the devil went and said, you know what, I can get Job to curse you and die. And God said, you can try that. But don't touch his soul, because that belongs to me. Yeah. Praise God, hallelujah. <clears throat> and the devil took absolutely everything. That Job had. Everything. I get mad if my drive through order is wrong. How childish can that be? You can agree because I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about you. How childish can I be? And this man lost everything he ever had. Lost it all. And when his wife come and said, why don't you just curse God and die? Look at you. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. He said, I came into this world naked and I'll leave this world naked. What was he saying? I came into this world with nothing and I'll leave with nothing. It's not about stuff. The Bible says, what's the problem with a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? 
What does it profit you and I to have everything and lack Jesus? What does it profit you and I to come to church Sunday in and Sunday out, go through the motions, get involved, and not even know who Jesus is? Christian, what does it profit us this morning to come to church, know who Jesus is, but not know what he sounds like, not adhere to his voice, come into church, do what we think is right, leave and get in our car, and go back and go through another week of doing whatever it is that we want to do, not listening to the voice of God, not knowing it even if we heard it speak. What good is it? What good was it to study God's word and not know God? What good is it to worship Jesus and not have a personal relationship with him? Yeah. What good is it to tell others how they can make it to a place called heaven and you don't have a clue in the world how to get there yourself? Yeah. What good does it do to be able to pray down the glory mm -hmm. that you don't even have? good is it to fill a church house when the Holy Spirit is not even there? Mm -hmm. What good is it to say, oh, how I love Jesus when you really don't? Mm -hmm. What good is it to call yourself a Christian mm -hmm. and not follow what Jesus Christ has asked? Mm -hmm. Yes. I don't get up here and preach God's word because <laughs> it's a cool thing to do. It's not a cool thing to do. Because most of the, 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 the problems in the church world today come from the church, not from the world. If you don't believe me, then speak out the truth sometimes and find out how many people pat you on the back. There won't be many. Last night, this scripture came to my heart when Jesus said to not cast your pearls before the swine lest they turn and rend you. Mm -hmm. What's he talking about? He's talking about not every battle you think you need to go out and just start into and share the gospel. If it's not Holy Spirit driven, then keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Christians haven't figured out how to do that. Everything that they don't like, they're going to talk. Why? Because they love the Lord? No, that's what they'll tell you. It's because of their own pride. That's right. mm -hmm. See, what I'm talking about right now is not going to make a whole lot of people happy. <clears throat> Every Battle, God does not need you to open your mouth. Yeah. He don't. If he needs you to open your mouth, he'll lead you through the Holy Spirit and what to say. And if, I can promise you, it won't be hurtful, it won't be disrespectful, it won't be condemning, it will be in love yeah. and conviction. So Christian, here's the thing. Let our faith speak and our human side of it shut up. Yeah. It's a harsh word, but it's true. Not every battle does Jesus Christ need us to be involved in. There was times he told David, just wait. Go out there and do nothing. And what would happen when David decided he didn't want to do nothing? He wanted to go fight. He'd lose. Sometimes the Lord just needs us to be quiet. Do nothing. There are those that come to me sometimes and will say little things. They're not Christians. They don't go to church. But they'll say little things that tells me that God's been talking to them. You want to know what I say to them? Nothing. You mean you don't witness? No, because God didn't lay it on my heart to say so. Mm -hmm. 
when he does, I'll say something. Mm -hmm. Until then, I keep my mouth shut. Why? Because it's clear that God's already started mm -hmm. talking to him. <laughs> and when it's time for me to say something, God will let me know about it. Mm -hmm. Until then, God he keeps his mouth shut. And lets God do what God's doing. Amen. Not every battle requires my words. Not every battle requires me to take action and do something. What it does require is that I completely, in all things, trust in God, wait upon God, and keep my faith in God and His time. Yes. That's what is required. Not my words. Not my actions. Not my ideas. Not my thoughts. My trust, my faith, and my commitment to Jesus Christ is what is needed. Let my faith speak that Donnie was shut up. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Yep. He's not interested in what I think. He's not interested in what I might do. He's only interested in, do you trust me or don't you? Job, even though he complained, even though he was going through a horrible time in his life, eventually his faith started speaking. Yep. Mm -hmm. My Redeemer lived. Mm -hmm. Church this morning, my Redeemer lived. Amen. And yours. Amen. Because it will dictate how you live your life. Mm -hmm. It will dictate how you treat others. It will dictate whether or not, when times get hard, you make it or you don't. I pray for our nation on a daily basis. I do not hate anyone. I may disagree with their policy. I may disagree with their stance. But I also know that, guess what? Jesus is in control. Yeah. I'm going to pray for him. Amen. Because that's what changes people. That's what changed me. That's what changed you. Was somebody who took the time to pray for you. Does that mean I don't get upset? No, not at all. I do get upset. <clears throat> when I see policies and things, you know, that aren't right mm -hmm. taking place, I get upset. Mm -hmm. But I've got to keep that in check because I've got to realize, guess what? No matter what, Jesus Christ is in control. Yep. Amen. So this morning, church, as we close, I say this. Our Redeemer, look, I know that, and I believe that you know that. Mm -hmm. But if you're here this morning and you don't, in your heart, you can't say with 100%, I'm ready to meet Jesus and be custom. If you can't say that in your life, don't walk out of here today not making that decision. I'm not promised, and I've said this many a time, I'm not promised to make it home this afternoon. I'm not promised to wake up tomorrow morning and go to work. But what I am promised is that it's appointed once for man to die and then the judgment. It's guaranteed that I'll stand before God one day. It's guaranteed that you will too. Now the choice is up to you. We sing a song here, Almost Persuaded. Please don't let that be you. I was almost persuaded. Like the individual that spoke to Jesus said, I was almost persuaded. Almost, and I've heard this in a few things, almost only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. Not in salvation. Make it a guarantee in your life. Yeah. That should Jesus Christ come today for you, that you'll be ready to meet and let him stand. Yep.